In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Beloved fathers, beloved fathers, mothers, brothers, and sisters across the nation that have joined us today on our third week UOTY Spiritual Teleconference. Thank you for taking an hour of your precious Friday evening to glorify our Lord and serve with, with us, uh, as well as learn about our faith in this season of, uh, great, of great Lent. Since the beginning of Lent, UOTY has been hosting a special spiritual teleconference every Friday by this hour to commemorate on each week's lesson. As we have uh, been taught at our churches, the greatest scholar and gospeler, Ethiopian St. Yadid, has given each Sunday a special name of commemoration for us to contemplate, read together, and learn as we build our relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. We have amazing teachers lined up, uh, as you have seen, each week, and the same thing will continue today. This whole conference will be around an hour and 30 minutes. We will have mesmers and literature that will be performed. Today, we have one sermon by Deacon Hainok from California, mesmer by uh, Diakon, Brother Diakon Mulugeta from D.C., and a poem reading by Lilan Nadesta and Maklit from Minnesota. Today we are blessed to have Kafis Benleta from Risa Adivarat Sarharian Kantisimlasi Church in Minnesota to, op- to open our conference with a blessing and prayer. So we will now go to Kafis Benleta for prayer. Kafis Alu? Ah, Allah. Let us <laughs> invite you ለባለተነዘገን <laughs> የአባቶቻችን የነቢያትን የዋሪያትን የታርቃንን የሰማዕታትን ጉባያቸውን ተሰባቸውን ይባረክላቸው የኛንም እንድትባርክልን እንደምንሃለን አቤቱ የተጠነቆትን ተጥንቃታቸው ተሰገሩትን እርዳቸው በክርስቲያናችን ከጠላት ፈተና ተጠብቅልን እኛንም በተዋህዶ ሃይማኖታችን አጥናን ሀገራችንንም ተጠብቅልን ዳይማኖስ አንተን በመግባር ሰፍተን ስነ የስነ ቀዳሾች የመንግስት ወራሾች አደረገን ዘንድ ከወረና ገናና ስምህን አባታችን ሆይ ይላል እንጠራለን አባታችን ሆይ በሰማያት የምትኖር ስነ ይቀደስ መንግስት ተምጣ ፈቃድ በሰማይ እንደሆነች እንዲሁም በመድርም ትሁን የለትን የያችን ፍጥን ዛሬ በደላችንን ይቀርበለን እኛም ይበደኑን ይጥል እንደምን ነው አቤቱ ወደ ፈተናም አጣጥባን ተከፉ ሁሉ አድኖን እንጂ መንግስት ያንተና ተና አይ ክብር ምስጊያና ለዘላለም አሜን ነቢያችን ቅዱስን እንግል ማርያም ሆይ ዘመላኩ በቅዱስ ገብርኤል ሰላምታ ሰላም እንለሻለን በሐሳቤሽ ድንግልነሽ ወሰጋሽን እንግል ያጨናፊ እግዚአብሔርና ሆይ ሰላምታ ላንቺ ገባሻል ከሴቶች ሁሉ ተረጅተህ ታንቺ ተባረክነህ ሲመጣን ሲንፈሬ ተባረክነህ ጸጋን ተመላሽ ቅዱስ ሆይ ደስ ይበልህ ዶክተር እግዚአብሔር ታንቺ ጋር ነውና ተተወደደው ልጅ ከጌታችን ከመዳኔታችን ከኢየሱስ ክርስቶስ ዘንድ ይቅርታና መረጥ ለምንይልን አጥያታችን ያስርዘን ለዘላለም አሜን ኦ እግዚአብሔር ኢየሱስ ክርስቶስ ታዋቃችን እስሐ ወሰራይ ኃጢያት ሰራይ ኃጢያት የዋጢያ ተኩሉ ህዝብ ተናውቀው በደፍረት ፋናውቀው በሰተት በሃሊዮ በገቢር በነቢይ እና ኢሳራሃቲያት ይጋይሪክታ ጀይሪባል አሜን ይፍቱን አባታችን ቴንክ ዩ ፋደር ካሲስ በለተ ዊ ዊል ናው ጎ ስትሬት ቱ ዲያቆም መለጌታ ቱ ሲንግ አስ ዋን ስፒሪቹዋል መዝሙር ባለ ዲያቆም መለጌታ እሺ በስማዕ ወወልድ ወመን ፈስ ቅዱስ ነሐዱ አምላክ አሜን የተወደዳችሁ ይዛይር ሰዎች ይሄንን ድምጽ መሰሙ በሙሉ ይዛይር ሰላም ተወላችሁ ጋር አይሆኑ አንዲት መዝሙር አሁን ቀጥያ አስደምጣቸዋለሁ ይዛይር ከወላችን ጋር አይሁን አሜን አሜን አቤቱ ደግሰ አልቋልና አልቋልና ደምደረም ፍቅር ተፍቷልና ተፍቷልና 
እንደ ቸርነት አድነን አድነን በደላችን አትቅደር አትቅደር የረደ የታምላክ ፍቅር ስጠን ፍቅር ስጠን እንደ አህዛቡ አታደርገን አታደርገን ክርስቲያንንና እንወደድ እንወደድ እዛክ አንጣ ካንተ መንገድ ካንተ መንገድ አቤቱ ደግሰ ወልቋልና አልቋልና በመድር ፍቅር ተፍሷልና ተፍሷልና እንደ ቸርነት አድነን አድነን በደላችን ማትቀር አትቀር አቤቱ ንጹል በፍጠርል ንፍጠርል ሰውን የሚያስወድድ ካለን ከን ካለን ከን አንደ በታችንም እንድናገር እንድናገር ሰለ ሰላም ቋንቋ ሰለ ፍቅር ሰለ ፍቅር አቤቱ ደግሰ ወልቋልና አልቋልና በመድር ፍቅር ተፍቷልና ተፍቷልና እንደ ቸርነት አድነን አድነን በደላችን ማትቆጠር አትቆጠር በእግዚአብሔር ፍቃድ የሚመራ የሚመራ ከከፋት ደግነት የሚዘራ የሚዘራ አንደ በቱ ሁሉ የታረነ የታረነ ለቃለ ወንጌሉ የደከነ የደከነ አጄቱ ደግሰ ወልቋልና አልቋልና በመድር ፍቅር ተፍቷልና ተፍቷልና እንደ ቸርነት አድነን አድነን በደላችን ማትቆጠር አትቆጠር ምግባርና እምነት የተሰጠው የተሰጠው ዘባክ ህንስጠን ሁነኛ ሰው ሁነኛ ሰው አንተን የሚመስል በህይወቱ በህይወቱ ፍቅርና ትትና የግላብቱ የግላብቱ አቤቱ ደግሰ ወልቋልና አልቋልና በመድር ፍቅር ተፍቷልና ተፍቷልና እንደ ቸርነት አድነን አድነን በደላችን ማትቆጠር አትቆጠር የማስመስል ፍቅር የበዛ የበዛ ሰበረክ ሷልና እንደዋዛ እንደዋዛ ፍጹም ወደድ ንስጠንና አስጠንና አዲስ ሰው ነው እንደገና እንደገና አቤቱ ደግሰ ወልቋልና አልቋልና ደምድር 
ፍቅር ተፍቷልና ተፍቷልና እንደ ቸርነት አድነን አድነን በደላችንን ማትክተር አትክተር ደገኛ ሰው ማግኘት አስቸግሯል አስቸግሯል እስከመጨረሻ ማንጽና አልማንጽና ምግባሩ ትክክል ወነተኛ ወነተኛ ልቡ የሚጸየፍ ከዳተኛ ከዳተኛ አዲቱ ደግሰ ወልቋልና አልቋልና በመድር ፍቅር ተፍቷልና ተፍቷልና እንደ ቸርነት አድነን አድነን በደላችንን አትቁጠር አትቁጠር ሰደመዝሙሩ ያምላካችን ስሙ የተመሰገነ ይሁን አሜን ብራዘር ዲያቆን ሙልኬታ ዘማሪ መላክ ያስማልን አወር ብራዘር ጀስ ሴይን ቱ አስ ፍሮም ሳውም 12 verse 1 that reads help lord for the godly man ceases for the faithful disappear from among the sons of men and the mazmur also uh, talks about god seeing us for his compassion and forgiveness so thank you brother for that uh warming uh, spiritual mazmur may our brother hear the hymns of the angels from above and may god grant our brother long years of service uh thank you now before the sermon we will have a short poem read by uh sister nikit from minnesota a poem read by me the title of my poem is heal you can heal we live in a life of insanity everything is accessible and possible living the life of christianity shall make us abide from vanity if we have done so you can heal we have been stuck in situations where we can't find help therefore we find ourselves fighting temptation yet it just requires a speck of faith we shall put god first and never hesitate you can heal in these lay a great multitude of important folk of blind halt withered waiting for the moving water here we reflect these people we strive to speak the miracle of church even if we are crippled jesus said unto him rise take up thy bed and walk you are healed there are times we fail we sin we lose energy let's rejoice in the name of god strengthen a grip with god for he saves with greater energy you can heal verily verily i say unto you he that believeth on me hath everlasting life i am the bread of life we need to accept this in order to survive you can heal we shall never give up our faith we will forever experience an amazing feel when we all heal if we pray fast repent without interference hail to thy lord and beg for forgiveness our life of insanity shall be executed we all will heal and david stilly Thank you for that uh, beautiful poem sister Maclet uh which the poem ties with today's sermon Matagu in John chapter 5 uh, thank you kanu uh, chasamallin may you hear the light, uh, the word of life 
We will now uh, straight um, at the car go to uh, our brother, Diakon Zinok, who will deliver the, uh, today's sermon. Diakon Zinok, the stage is yours. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. First and foremost, I want to give glory to the author of life and the living God. Secondly, I want to say, may God grant you all health and longevity, my beloved brothers and sisters. I also want to appreciate United Orthodox Youth, or UOTY, because even though we are all unworthy bond servants, as it is written in the Gospel according to Luke chapter 17, it helps to encourage our brothers and sisters when we see them doing something great. If you have a heart, or the Ethiopian, or the Eritrean, or the Coptic, or whatever it may be within the Tawahado communion, if you have a heart for our one holy universal and apostolic church, then you need to understand what UOTY has already understood, and that's that there will be no future in the English-speaking diasporas in North America, South Africa, Australia, in the UK, wherever it may be, without incorporating English language services. So please pray for all of your English language servants, and then we'll realize that our church, like heaven, is not just going to be a bunch of habashas, but it's including habashas and Farinj. And today, in, in that effect, if you appreciate what I do, you could check out more blog posts, hymns and songs, as well as a weekly podcast, Studying the Holy Scriptures at tohadobiblestudy.com. Today, what we are assigned is, as our brother Diakon Ephraim said, uh, from the selection of Kudus Yared or Holy Yared Mazagu, or the paralytic, the paralyzed man. So we find this parable or the story in the Gospel according to John, chapter 5, from verses 1 to 25. It's what the lead priests should be reading according to our lectionary or Gitsawe this forthcoming Sunday. Today, I will be cutting up the, the gospel portion from John 5, 1 to 25, into three sections. The first will be 1 to 14, and it's about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, healing the mazagu, or the paralytic, the paralyzed man at the pool that is near, um, the, the, the pool where people are getting healed, that the angel dips into and gets troubled. And this is during the Sabbath day or Saturday. Then we'll be going to the section covering verses 15 to 18, about how our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was persecuted and people even had a killer or murderous intent when he was doing such things as healing on the Sabbath. Finally, we'll have verses 19 to 25, which have the doctrinal point about the oneness of the Father and the Son, but also the behavioral point about the judgment, which is the day, the time, the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, what our church calls Dagam uh, So. Verses 1 to 14. After these things, there was a feast of the Jews. There was a pool of five porches, called in Hebrew, the blind, lame, or paralyzed, waiting for the third up by the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made whole of whatever disease he had. A certain man was there who had his illness for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and perceived that the man had been sick for a long time, he asked him, do you want to be made well? The sick man replied, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, but while I am coming, someone else steps down before me. Jesus said to him, arise, take up your mat and walk. Immediately, the man was made well. He took up his mat and began to walk. Now it was the Sabbath on that day. And so the Jews said to the man who had been cured, It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry the mat. The man answered them, He who made me well, that one said to me, Take up your mat and walk. Then they asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take up your mat and walk? But the man who had been healed did not know who it was. For Jesus had withdrawn in the crowd that was there. Later, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, Behold, you have become well. Sin no more, so that nothing worse may happen to you. Just as all of us 
are in but not of this world, just as if you are familiar with dispute resolution or the ombudsman profession, these people are called to be within institutions while critiquing them. Just like if you're familiar with the corporate world, compliance departments are meant to check organizations from within the organization to see whether they are compliant or adherent or obedient to the external law or the statute that exists that's relevant to that organization. Jesus is within the institution, and he wants us to stay within the institution, but is still anti-institutional. He heals on the Sabbath, which is a clearly anti-institutional act, but he celebrates the feast. He celebrates the festival, which is eminently institutional. And we should all strive for this balance. There's an Amharic saying that goes, Marizim madani tihon al bata. Even poison can become a medicine if used in moderation. And both this story as well as this Amharic saying let us know that everything we do has to be functional, it has to be situational, it has to be in a context, and it has to be in a spirit. The spirit in which our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ healed Mazagu, or the paralytic, is in the spirit of the love of the neighbor. If you take nothing away from what I say today, make sure that you love your neighbor, because that is the heart of the Word of God, all of it, from the beginning to the end, from Genesis to St. John's Revelation, is all about the love of the neighbor. You use that as a key, and it can unlock many passages that may be difficult for you to understand. We learn here the word or his life-giving message, his kalahiwat, his word of life, has power over any sickness, whether it be blindness or being lame or being paralyzed, whatever it may be, his word has power over it. We see this every Sunday or more than that when we go to the Eucharistic liturgy, the Kaddasi, which is the worship service of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawadu Church or the Tawadu Communion in general when we see even people who are mentally challenged being brought to taste from the elements, the bread and the wine, which are his flesh and which are his blood, truly and verily. But more importantly than the word having power over any sickness is that phrase he uses at the end. He says to the paralytic, Thomas Agu, sin no more. The same thing is what he says to the adulteress within the same gospel according to John, three chapters later in chapter 8. There, the institutional leaders are all prepared to get their stones and to stone to death some woman who is caught in the act of cheating on her spouse, on her husband, which is a horrendous thing to do. But our Lord is drawing in the sand on the floor. The scriptures don't say it, but... Tradition teaches that what he is drawing in the sand are the sins of everyone there. And that's why he says, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Because they're ashamed of their own sin, none of them do so. And the woman is spared in that moment. While he is without sin, he didn't stone her. But he also didn't leave her to wallow in the filth of her sin. He said to her the same thing he said to Ms. Agu, the paralytic. He said to her, Sin no more. The people in our church, our fathers who prepared the lectionary or the Gitawe, were very brilliant. Not only is this passage going to be on Sunday, but we also find James or Jacob or Yaakov, chapter 5, verses 14 to the end. There we learn about Misterakandi, or the mystery of unction to the sick. It's one of the seven mysteries or sacraments of our church. And in there, the elders, the presbyters, or the priests go over and pour and anoint the sick with oil, and they pray over them, and they pray for a physical healing. But more important than the physical healing is they pray for the forgiveness of their sins. It's very important. After he tells the man that he's not going to sin anymore, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ tells him, to arise and walk. Where else do we hear 
that we need to arise. Every kandasi, every Eucharistic liturgy, of service. Now I don't have a delightful melody. There are many others who could say it better. But every time, if you pay attention and you hear, you're hearing the deacon tell you to arise for prayer. Sometimes they say it in melody like that. Sometimes they say it quickly. Sometimes they say it in Amharic instead of Gez. In some parishes, they've also begun using English, so they'll say, arise for prayer. The people who made our liturgy, our fathers who prepared the liturgy for us, have this sequence of arise for prayer, Lord forgive us, peace be unto all of you, and with your spirit, 15 times. So if you go to church every week, 15 times you're told arise. The same thing that our Lord and Savior told Agu, the paralytic, you're told arise. One could be a literal, one meaning could be a literal meaning where you just need to stand up or arise. Another deeper meaning could be a mental one. Sometimes people doze off when they're in the liturgy. They could wake up and pay attention and focus to the words being said, focused on the communal prayer, which is the reason of their gathering, all leading up to the communion, which is the flesh and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which they should be prepared and repentant to take. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense to call ourselves Orthodox Christians. But beyond that, too, is the spiritual message. To arise is to take a stand. Our father amongst the saints from Alexandria, Abuna Athanasius, Father Athanasius or Bishop Athanasius the Great, is also known as Contra Mundo or Tara Alam, against the world. The reason he's known as that is though he was kicked out of his place for 45 years, his position, his throne of being bishop, though he was exiled five times, though the whole world stood against him, and though everyone was saying, Athanasius, why don't you change your mind? Why don't you submit to the Arian heresy? Why don't you admit that Jesus is not the creator, but a creation? He said, if the whole world stands against the truth, then I will stand against the world. Or I, you could phrase it in a different way if you want to translate it, I will arise against the world. So to arise is to take a stand for God, to walk in his ways, to obey his commandments, to make sure that his doctrine is being protected and his calls to better behavior are being spread. In the Gospel of Mark, which is the first, the Gospel according to Mark, which is the first good news or gospel written, chapter 5, we have this Aramaic phrase that they just write. They don't even translate it. They keep it in Aramaic. They say, Talita kumi. Talita is maid or little girl. Kumi, though it's Aramaic, Aramaic is a sister language of Arguz and Amharic and of the other Semitic languages of Ethiopia. We know what kumi means. It means arise. In going back to the Gospel of John in chapter 11, Lazarus, when he dies according to the world, or when he's asleep, according to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we don't find the exact word arise, but we find the phrase, come out. So what does our Lord Jesus mean when he tells the little girl to arise, when he tells Lazarus, who has fallen asleep with the Lord or dead, to come out? What does he mean when he, through the Holy Spirit, allowed our fathers to write a liturgy in which 15 times they tell us to arise? Well, it means he wants us to walk like Henoch or Enoch, seventh from Adam, which is to behave in a God-pleasing manner, which is, in other words, to sin no more. The, neg- the negation or the negative way of saying it is sin no more. The affirmation or the positive way of saying it is to walk in a God-pleasing manner. As we mentioned earlier, Mazagu is a title given to us for this weekend and in in fact for the for the whole week beginning sunday or ahud ahud is the same root word as ahad was it means the first day of the week sunday is the first day of the week sometimes we get confused with that so in the song that kadusiyaret or holy yaret prepared for us he says the god of adam the god of humankind made the sabbath or saturday for rest. 
Mazagu, or the paralytic, was not at rest. The reason he wasn't at rest is because of the envy and jealousy that he had in his heart. Day after day, he watched people when they waited and waited and waited for the angel to dip into the water. The water became holy water, and the first person to get to that water would receive a healing. Because he was paralyzed, because of his circumstance or his situation, he wasn't able to get that, and he had envy in his heart. The Lord Jesus removed any reason for envy in this situation, and he challenged and encouraged him to sin no more, to find no excuses for sin to be in his heart, because that's where it begins. And when us Semitic people say heart, we mean our thoughts, our mind. So regardless of our circumstance, we too need to, to realize that the cards of life are not always equally distributed, but we still have the opportunity, no matter what situation we're in, to draw nearer to God so that he can reveal to us what are our inner issues, and he can make us better every single day. Mazagu, or the paralytic, took up his mat and began walking. This is a shadow or a precursor of the daily practice of taking up the cross and using that cross as a self-denying and sacrificial love toward our neighbors, which is that love of which is the basic teaching that I had mentioned earlier. And this means that envy should have no place in our hearts, whether our neighbors have more or whether they have less regarding earthly status, regarding earthly power, or earthly or fleshly anything. Verses 15 to 18. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. For this reason, the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him because he did these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My father is still working, and I am also working. Because of this, the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, not only because he broke the Sabbath, but also because he called God his own father, making himself equal with God. So there's that first doctrinal point I mentioned at the beginning. The father and the son are one. And we need to understand that when we are in, but not of, the institution, the one holy universal and apostolic church, when we acknowledge the power of his word to heal any sickness, any blindness, any lameness, any paralysis, when we walk in a God-pleasing manner like Enoch, seventh from Adam, when we sin no more and rid ourselves of envy, not through our own might, not through our own efforts, but through his grace, which comes from above, we will be persecuted. Sometimes that persecution may even result in death because people have this killer or murderous intent. Our synkasar, or our synaxarium, it's a to say, has the book of the lives of the saints and the holy ones. And it is bursting at the seams with all of these tales and stories of the martyrs. The Greek word martyr, from which the English martyr comes from, and our own is samait, means both witness and martyr. A martyr is someone who has given witness, who has given testimony to walking in the way of God to such an extent and in the face of such persecution that they're killed. Recently in Libya, we have some contemporary martyrs of Coptic Egyptian origin and Ethiopian origin as well. So it's not just in the Sinkasar or the Synexarium or the Book of the Lives of the Saints and Holy Ones, but we've seen it in the 21st century, in 2017, in 2016, in 2015. You can imagine every generation is going to have it. Were the session more interactive, I would bring two questions to you to, for you to answer. Because it's not, I'm, I'm going to have these questions be rhetorical, but I'm going to ask them anyway. The first is going to be externally oriented, and it's going to be about this martyrdom or giving witness. The second is going to be internally oriented. And we often need to make sure that we're having the external and the internal. Some people have an imbalance of that, the formal and the informal. The reason that 
there are issues in our church a lot of time are because people have imbalanced perspectives where they want to have everything informal or everything formal. We need a balance of that. And we had a great example of that in our prayer. We began with the opening to the daily prayer, and then, which is an info, and then we got into an informal prayer of the day, and then we did the formal prayer of our Lord's Prayer, and then the Marian Prayer. In the same way, we do informal things and formal things. We do things internally and externally. So the externally oriented question, first, have we ever been persecuted for his word's sake, for his word of life, for his alahiwat? Why or why not? Have we ever been persecuted for supporting heterosexual monogamy or a unique sexual relationship between one man and one woman? Have we ever been persecuted for the sake of promoting celibacy? Everyone wants you to get married. But then who are going to be our monks? Who are going to be the eunuchs for the kingdom? So we have to stand for celibacy and abstention as well. Have we ever been persecuted for being uh, against materialism, for not wanting to buy all the things that you would see in MTV cribs? Have we ever been persecuted on a smaller scale for being a believer in God amongst atheists or people even of other religions? That's the external question. Now the internally oriented question. Are we as individuals or we in whatever groups or affiliations we're in guilty of persecuting or killing a carrier of God's word? I don't ask this idly. I ask this in the context of knowing cases in Ethiopia of fist fights and stone throwings for the sake of religion. So we have to ask ourselves, are we being persecuted and or are we persecuting? Verses 19 to 25. Accordingly, Jesus answered them, Amen, amen, I tell you. The Son can do nothing of himself, but only what he sees the Father doing. Indeed, whatever the Father does, the Son also does likewise. For the Father has deep affection for the Son and shows him all things that he himself does. And the Father will show him greater works than these, so that you may be astonished. For just as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, likewise the Son also gives life to whom he desires. As it is, the Father judges no one, but he has given all judgment to the Son, so that all may honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Amen, amen, I tell you. The one who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has eternal life and does not come into judgment, but has passed out of death into life. Amen, amen, I tell you. The hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will come life. The dead that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ are talking about are us if we are not with him, if we don't have his spirit. We are zombies, or as the title of that popular TV show says, the walking dead, until we become faithful to our sleepless, ever alert shepherd. We need to be like sheep. And we need to hear his voice. Sometimes, and I say this often, but I'll say it again for emphasis, we're like gargoyles and lawn gnomes. People like gargoyles on, on large architectural buildings. And some folks have lawn gnomes or lion statues in their front yards. Those statues all have ears. But no matter how much you speak to them, they will never listen and they will never obey. You know who does listen? You know who obeys? Sheep. Sheep listen to the voice of the shepherd. So we need to make sure that we're not a bunch of gargoyles and lawn gnomes, but that we are sheep to the shepherd who has given us his word, who is teaching us through the gospel according to John chapter 5 from verses 1 to 25. And the chief component of verses 19 to 25 here is a dogmatic point. It's one of our dogmas. It's from our Amaida Mister, or our five pillars of mystery. 
It is about judgment day. Three times in this passage, we hear the Greek or the English say, Amen, Amen, I tell you. Now, we should know what Amen, Amen, I tell you signifies because the church, for all of her greatest songs, especially during Fasika, which is approaching, begins by singing the long water, Amanda, 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 Amanda. In the Gitta's New Testament, I looked it up. Here where my English Greek Orthodox Bible says, Amen, Amen, I tell you, the Gitta's uses that same word that I just put a melody to. The songs we sing during Fasika or during the resurrection, or Pascha, have the phrase, Aman ba Aman. Here, in the Gospel of John, chapter 5, from verses 19 to 25, if you read the Giz, three times it says, Aman, Aman, Eblad Kumu. So, you see that the word, Amen, being translated here, other versions may say truly, other versions may say verily, other versions say most assuredly, is so important that we put this phrase in the most important holiday of the year, which is Fasika, or the, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is why we're having these telephones in the first place. So this word can be translated, you know, amen, the word that's translated as amen, can be truly, verily, most assuredly, it could be so be it, it could be let it be, it could mean I agree with you, it could mean all of these things. But what it signifies is importance. Whatever is said after is very important. Don't get me twisted. Don't twist my words. Don't misconstrue what I'm saying. All of Scripture is important. But especially when our Lord and Savior says, Amen, Amen, I tell you. When the church sings, Aman ba Aman, that means we really need to pay attention. And what it's teaching us is one of those five pillars of mystery, one of those Amayda Mister, which is Judgment Day, the return, the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When we celebrated Christmas, the birthday of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we celebrated Him coming humbly in a manger with smelly and filthy animals. When He comes back, He's coming back in glory. And when He comes back in glory, He's going to raise everyone from the dead who has ever died because they were just asleep. And he will give a decision or an opinion. If you know anything about courts, what the judgment or the judgment is the decision or opinion of the judge. So he is the judge and his judgment or his decision or opinion rendered will be either death or life. And his criteria is whether or not we hear his word of life and believe in him who sent him, who is God the Father. May we all be worthy of receiving life at the end of time during judgment. And when we recognize that, yes, he is the maskare sab, the anthropos, the lover of mankind or the lover of humankind. But he's also the judge. And as judge, no matter what he decides, for whom he decides, no matter who he makes an outsider and who he makes an insider, he is the only one who has the right to make that choice. And we hope that he heals us, not just in a physical way, like he healed Mat'agu, the paralytic, but we hope that we get an eternal judgment unto life from him for his is the kingdom his is the power his is the glory forever and ever amen amen uh thank you brother jacqueline david for that powerful teaching uh Agu, or the paralyzed uh, man from John chapter 5. Uh, with Diakon Hilk, uh, we just learned that everything we do 
shall be in spirit and love. Uh, and he also reminded us over and over again through his sermon that um, the quote that Christ, uh, the message that Christ had for that paralyzed man at the end after saving him, he told him, sin no more. Same thing he says. He said to the prostitute that the Pharisees wanted to stone. Even though he saved her and a 28 years paralyzed man, his message was at the end was sin no more. We learned through his words that Christ saved us from the agony of being defeated by our adversaries, but most importantly, he wants us to change and sin no more. So what was important for that paralyzed man was not just being able to walk again after, uh, after uh, 38 years, uh, but it's actually not sinning and changing his life uh, through Christ. In the book of Hamamat, uh, we're reminded that in, uh, the book of Hamamat is read during uh, the Passion Week every year. Every year, once a year, the church reads um, the book of Hamamat during Passion Week or uh, Hamamat Summit. And in that, in that book, it tells us that this paralyzed man at the end actually stood with the enemies of Jesus Christ, yelling for his crucifixion. He was actually one of the men that slapped him while Christ were, uh, were, uh, was taken to the uh, Pilate's court. He forgot that uh, he forgot that Christ. Uh, he forgot the warning or message that Christ told him at the end. After he saved him, he told him not to sin, uh, sin no more. So through the story, we shall remember we are all paralyzed men that need his salvation, and we all are so. Um, we all gain that salvation through his uh, precious blood. But once we are told to take our bed and walk, as Deacon Hanok reminded us again and again, we shall walk with purity and uh, sin no more. But again, uh, brother, may you hear the words of life, and may God grant our brother long years of service. We will now have uh, one mazmur uh, by Diakon Mulugeta, and then we'll have Mr. Um, Nadesta read us one poem. Let's go to that one more time. Okay, uh, there is something about the gummy. I saw my own. I remember how the Christian name is the 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 way na nyan tadine mazagun yafawas baliyu sultane. The way na nyan tadine mazagun yafawas baliyu sultane. Yes, Gavishita Bantende Tereta Bantende Tereta Nyanta is an adivinousi Vishita Adina Nyasara with Gita. Ah, yes, Gavishita Bantende Tereta. Banten de Tereta Nyante is an Adinus Vashita Adin Saravit Gita Adina Nyanta Dine Masagun Yasa was very useful Tani. The way Nanta Dinag Matagun Yasa was very useful Tana Yasa Gavashita Bantanda Tarata Bantanda Tarata Namta is an advent Adena 
አሜን ዲያቆን ሙልጌታ ዘማሬ መላክ ተሰማለን ይ ጀስት ሴንት ዋስ አባውት መጣጉ ዘማሬ መላክ ተሰማለን ዊ ዊል ናው ሃቭ ሰስተር ለና ደስታ ዴሊቨር ፖም ቴንክ ዩ ዲያቆን ኢፍሬም ዘ ማይ ፖም ኢዝ አባውት ሆሊ ኮሚኒየን ኤንድ ኢትስ አባውት ሊተራጂ ሶ ጎዝ አላንግ ዊዝ አወር ቶፒክ ቱዴይ Um, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. I was scared, so I stopped. The sacrament I cut off, the supreme act of worship, is the one I knocked off. I pretended not to know what he told me, that this was the way he would dwell in me. He said, take this and eat it, for this is my body, then he gave it. He said, drink it, for this is my blood, then he gave it. confided the covenant between God and his people you me him and her yes his people just as he ate it we shall too he set an example but it was easier to follow when i was just two despite knowing he is love joy happiness i stopped doing good for my soul with little awareness poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many we step aside only to pile our sins oh so many perhaps i should have started with understanding the liturgy knowing the history would have given me energy to wake up early and take part not coming at the end to acknowledge it like art okay so why not start after the morning is gone we ask not knowing the significance of dawn mary magdalene and mary didn't wait until noon At dawn is when they came to see the tomb. As we come to church early without whining, let's remember it's his resurrected body we see early morning. It's the five offerings we see come alive, the ones that let our faith truly thrive. The offerings of incense and light, the Christian life shining so bright. The offering of lips and the body leading us to communion, so it is him we embody. Working hard to pay attention, I saw the four readings, each in a different direction, symbolizing the four rivers that flow from the Garden of Eden, allowing plants to grow. After the fourth reading comes the fifth, remove your net, Allah, my mom's pinch came with, symbolizing the veil I placed on my heart by listening to psalms I took part. Shortly after we say exio several times, 41 to be exact, they beat him, losing count several times. The gates shortly open in depiction of Christ's public crucifixion during time of worship one cry to another they call and response that today gives us a bother however before me and you even Adam too our lord was glorified by angels not just one or two so no we on earth didn't create it peter and john witnessed angels repeating it in heaven as they took part in the divine liturgy bringing it to the people giving them the energy however energy doesn't replace preparation we must follow rules to avoid damnation lord i pray and dream of the day i stand in front of those gates ready to say dear lord i want you to forever dwell in me so i know of the life your crucifixion gave me glory be to god 
Amen. Uh, thank you, Karu Kassamalin, Sister Lilina Desta, for that beautiful poem about liturgy that ties with today's sermon. The Orthodox way of life is, uh, as we all know it, one of the Orthodox way of, ways of life is being part of liturgy. Uh, no one can claim to be an Orthodox and not be part of uh, liturgy. And one of the reasons we need liturgy in our life is because, or Kaddafi in our life is because we are, we are too metabu or paralyzed in our own ways and, and need his holy flesh and precious blood that is given to us through the prayer of liturgy. So thank you so much for that uh, poem. Uh, and as we, uh, as a tradition that we started last week, it kind of ties with our um, um, sermon or topic uh, about Kaddafi as well. Uh, we're going to do, uh, we're going to sing for just the uh, Barakat uh, We're going to uh, sing one misbak. Uh, that goes with Matagu uh, or the Misbak that is saying during Kaddasi uh, for Matagu uh, for Sunday. The Misbak uh, will be from Mazmur Arba. Xavier, Xavier, you do star at the Mamu, where you may yet go to Kulo, Miskavihu, and Dawihu. Answer a Xio, Tasahalen. Xiavir, better way, Algalai Sallo. Xiavir, better way, Alga Sadler, Yedal. Menitao Gulu, the Vashitao Gze, and a Tasletal. And yes, Avitu, Marin. Mazmur, Arba, the Kamnes Arba, and Kutafos Tuskara. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou wilt make all his bed and his sickness. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. Psalm 41, verse 3 to 4. Brothers and sisters, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, if you have any questions, please send us your thoughts and questions at uoty.pr at gmail.com. Please pray for UOTY and its mission. It is essential we pray for this mission. Uh, now we will have our closing prayer. Jack uh, Muligeta will uh, close our prayer, close our conference with prayer and blessing. ከሃጢያ <laughs> መንግስተተም <laughs> Sagani Tamilashoi, the civil Shulgavir Kanji Garnona, Kato de Dologis, Kagitachin, Kamilan Tachin, Kayusur Sosa, Nikatana, Rathlemin, 
አጣታችንን የሚያስተሰርልን ዘን ለዘላለም አሜን እግዚአብሔር አምጻህ እግዚአብሔር ወልድ ፈቅድ የእግዚአብሔር ፈቅዱስ ቸርነት ተባቂነት ከወላችን ጋር አይሁን አሜን እግዚአብሔር ይስጥል አሜን